hey Vienna or well wherever you're dialing in from today thank you either way for joining me so my name is Carolyn and I'm a software developer and Mozilla tech speaker based in Berlin Germany while I work at a startup that has a data science team I'm still personally a newbie when it comes to actually building intelligent algorithms so which means that this talk won't go deep into technical implementations to be honest, it won't be very technical at all. But I can guarantee you this, this talk will be part love letter, part cautionary tale. And if you haven't thought about this topic before, it'll change the way that you approach and consume news. We're gonna go through a lot of material in a short amount of time. So I provided this link with all of the resources that I'm gonna mention during the talk. I'll show this again at the end as well. So. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Anyway, let's get back on track. So today I'm here to talk to you about the effect that artificial intelligence, AI, and machine learning has had on modern journalism. And I'm particularly interested in this topic because before getting into tech, I actually used to be a full-time journalist. Transitioning from print journalism to software development made me realize all of the possibilities that technology could unlock, especially in how we think about our news cycle. I gravitated towards AI and machine learning because what I found was just really, really fascinating. It's important to understand though that even before AI and machine learning became a modern trend, data has always played a critical role in journalism. Catherine Gishiru, an International Center for Journalist Knight Fellow, put it really well. She said that data can be used to provide deeper insights into what is happening around us and how it might affect us. Combined with traditional reporting techniques, data can help you tell stories in more compelling and innovative ways and give citizens actionable information. She also mentioned that data can help journalists speak truth to power and challenge misinformation. Data means that there's less guesswork about what the facts are. This is a large part about why AI and machine learning practices are slowly being explored, assessed, and introduced in newsrooms. This technology can absorb huge data sets and analyze that information and identify trends. Then also make decisions on what to report and put those same trends into context. Many journalists, however, fear this technology, and understandably so. I mean, they don't want their jobs to become obsolete. But instead of fearing it, I believe that journalists should be learning and understanding it, and it's not just me. According to Maria Ronderos, the director of the Open Society Foundation's program on independent journalism, these technologies can actually empower journalists. It enables them to be more thorough and data-driven and allow them to better report on the increasingly globalized and information-rich world that we live in today. She says that intelligent machines can turbo power journalists' reporting, creativity, and ability to engage audiences. Following predictive data patterns and program to learn variations in these patterns over time, an algorithm can help reporters arrange, sort, and produce content at a speed never thought possible. Human journalists will continue to be necessary though. They're the ones who, at least in theory, have a specific goal in mind and should be asking relevant questions about the data. Plus, most journalists in the world don't have access to a team of programmers and data scientists, but that's a completely different issue. But the thing is, through software and natural language processing, a common subfield of AI, computers could take over tasks that, while very important, seem pretty mundane to humans, like analyzing these massive data sets, fact-checking, organizing tips, which are story ideas solicited from the public, making rough cuts of video content, and most of the other tedious tasks that I used to do when I was an unpaid intern at my local paper. To put this all in 
into context, I want to show you some of my favorite use cases for how this technology is being implemented in larger newsrooms. I've tried to sort them a bit by the type of technology, but it's pretty much just a giant list. Oops, sorry, that was loud. <laughs> All right, let's start with bots. So the Washington Post, for example, has a robot reporting program called Heliograph. In its first year, it produced around 850 articles. But what's most notable about Heliograph is its coverage of politics and elections. Heliograph earned the post an award for its excellence in use of bots from its work on the 2016 US election coverage. It continues to work on election day reporting for local congressional and yes, the 2020 presidential elections. Um, on the side, or on this slide, I've linked to a report from the Neiman Lab called, quote, how to cover 11,250 elections at once. Here's how the Washington Post's new computational journalism lab will tackle 2020. It talks about heliograph as well as other enhanced reporting efforts from the Post. So check it out. I'd recommend it. Forbes took a slightly different approach from the Post. So in 2018, Forbes launched a new site that was powered by a content management system. They named Birdie after their founder, BC Forbes. As an AI publishing platform, um, Birdie is designed specifically for their in-house newsrooms and partners. So I need to manually put this on. All right, oh, that didn't work. We'll just go like that. So as you can see in this demo, Birdie recommends ways to make headlines more compelling. It can suggest like relative, relevant imagery to accompany stories. And then you can pop them right in there. It helps you assess the reading complexity so that the stories are inclusive. It can provide short tweetable content summaries and it can provide real time trending hashtags and topics to cover. So really a little bit of everything. The LA Times also does a lot of compelling work with AI. For instance, QuickBot. So back in 2014, a huge earthquake hit the city of Los Angeles and the LA Times was the first to report on it. Basically because the earthquake happened, the reporter woke up, went to his computer and published the article in three minutes because it was already there waiting for him. The way it works is that whenever an alert comes from the US Geological Survey about an earthquake above a certain size threshold, QuakeBot is programmed to extract the relevant data from the report and plug it into a pre-written template. The story goes into their content management system where it will be reviewed and published by a human editor. The creator of QuakeBot also wrote this just about how it works and it includes code, various code samples, and yeah, just walks you through the whole process. The last of the bots comes from The Guardian Australia. They have an automated system called Reporter Mate, which first published an article in early 2019. It works basically the same as the others, but what makes it really special is that it's open source, which I was really excited about. But Bots aren't the only thing that AI can do for journalism. It can also dissect data sets, predict trends, and automate tasks. We've seen this with ProPublica and their anal analysis, <laughs> hard word, analysis of what various members of the US Congress talk about. They did this by taking thousands of press releases over the course of two years. They then trained a computer model to extract what phrases each Congress member uses most frequently. BuzzFeed also trained a computer, but for a very different purpose. They focused on finding and tracking secret spy planes. So the computer used a machine learning algorithm sift for planes with flight patterns that resembled those operated by the FBI and the Department of Homeland Security. This technology allowed them to report on how the U.S. Marshals hunted down drug cartel kingpins in Mexico, 
how a military contractor that tracks terrorists in Africa is also flying over U.S. cities, and other topics around aerial surveillance in general. On the other hand, the New York Times uses these technologies for moderating comments in their articles. So back in 2017, only 10% of the Times' articles were open to comments. But even with such a small percentage, a desk of moderators had to examine around 11,000 comments each day. So they're turning to AI to help automate that. They're using a tool called Perspective from Google parent Alphabet's Tech Incubator to evaluate the comments at scale. The Perspective API uses machine learning models to score the perceived impact that a comment might have on a conversation. With the first model identifying whether a comment could be perceived as toxic to a conversation, aka like harmful or abusive. They also previously implemented the Coral Project's talk tool to tackle these toxic comments. This utilizes the Perspective API to create a fully customized moderation UI tool specifically built for newsroom use cases. Both New York Times and Wired uses London-based Trint as their transcription service. So Trint's big selling point is that they use voice recognition to transcribe interviews in multiple languages. And something a little bit in between, but I maybe am the most excited about is this concept from Al Jazeera. In 2018 at Al Jazeera's Future of Media Leaders Summit, there were discussions around robot reporters deploying from drones in war zones. So let me turn this on. All right, so the idea is that the drone can fly into an area that is considered dangerous ground. The drone then deploys a robot that works for Al Jazeera. Maybe you can see its little badge it's wearing. In this example, they show the robot evaluating if it's a bad situation, it dodges an attack from a sniper. They note that human reporters aren't typically trained for these types of environments, not to mention the ethics of sending a civilian into these hostile spaces. But yeah, these are only a few examples. Many other larger news services like Bloomberg, Reuters, Associated Press, Yahoo, and more, and more even globally, are utilizing these technologies as well. There are also organizations whose work is dedicated to merging these two fields, like media and technology, and who are focusing almost entirely on artificial intelligence and journalism, to name a few. There's the Quartz AI Studio. So funded by a grant from the Knight Foundation, the Quartz AI Studio helps journalists use machine learning in their reporting. What I like about their work is that it focuses on making these practices more accessible to smaller media organizations. Think like local and regional papers with limited staff or maybe even individual freelance journalists. There are also a couple of areas like where Google is focusing on this topic. I'll highlight two of them. So the first is Facets. It's a machine learning data visualization tool from Google People and AI Research. It's open source so you can play with the data and create visualization of the information being presented. And Google's largest effort is focused on the Google News Initiative and more specifically journalism AI that they launched at the end of 2018. So this initiative is in partnership with POLIS, the international journalism think tank at the London School of Economics and Political Science. It aims to help the news industry use AI in more innovative ways through research and training. Not always AI centric, but Mozilla has always pushed for a better relationship between the tech and the news industry. So they have a history of partnering with the Knight Foundation, New York Times, Washington Post, and other global news organizations to drive open innovation in news. They also have specific projects like Open News, which connects a network of developers, designers, journalists, and editors to collaborate on open technologies um, and processes within journalism. This was incubated initially at Mozilla. There's also the Mozilla Information Trust Initiative, a collection of comprehensive efforts to keep the internet credible and healthy. 
So developing products, research, communities, and partnerships that are all trying to bite misinformation online. So everything I just told you is cool and great, sure. But I don't know about you, and maybe it's because I used to be a journalist, but it makes me question the level of responsibility that we should expect from human journalists who these technologies are assisting. Every journalism student I know was required to read uh, Bill Kovach and Tom Rosenstiel's The Elements of Journalism. In this book, they claim that journalism should serve as an independent monitor of power and, quote, offer a voice to the voiceless. They argue that a journalist's first obligation is to the truth because when citizens have reliable access to information that they can trust, they make better decisions. However, there's a disconnect between these principles and the reality when technology is introduced, which is interesting because the internet and journalism actually overlap on many of these foundational elements. But for this collaboration to be effective, there has to be a measure of accountability, which at the moment, and particularly in regards to AI and machine learning, there isn't. Early in this talk, I mentioned how transitioning from print journalism to software development made me realize how much technology can change how we think about our news cycle. The way our society consumes news is rapidly changing, but one thing remains the same. All journalism is biased. So, however, you used to be able to pick up a newspaper and know what you were getting. The Guardian, left-leaning. The Daily Mail, right-leaning. You were aware of these biases and chose your preferred paper despite that. Today, people rarely read a physical newspaper. Instead, they rely on tech products like social media or news aggregators, but many aren't tech savvy enough to decipher how these products are choosing the news that they see. On top of that, there's a lack of communication between the tech and media industries. As gatekeepers to the news, I believe that the journalists creating the content should be at the heart of this collaboration. And we should be able to rely on them to make ethical decisions around data. Traditionally in journalism, there are many layers to ethical decision making. There are long held industry values for assessing whether a choice is ethical. Uh, making that decision is guided by strictly set editorial standards. Then later, these decisions are enforced by a code of ethics, usually internal or maybe one of the ones like the Society of Professional Journalists Code of Ethics. With AI and machine learning creeping into the news cycle, these ethical foundations require a revisit. As of now, that I know of, there's no publicly available code of conduct that contains principles on the ethical use of these technologies in journalism. Then there's like the ethical question of whether or not it's on the journalists themselves to expose their data source and the algorithm this, that they use. I'm a big fan of it, but again, I know it's not always an option for everyone. So, okay, before we spiral down an ethics rabbit hole, trust me, it's very easy to do. I want to touch on another question. What does artificial intelligence mean for the future of journalists and journalism? In the true spirit of technology, the future is totally open, but there are some ideas. Journalism AI from the Google News Initiative that we mentioned earlier, they conducted a survey of 71 newsrooms, news organizations in 32 different countries on how they're currently using or can maybe further benefit from these technologies. The results were published in November, 2019 the actual PDF is over 100 pages long. You can look at it on this link on the slide. Um, but towards the end, it discusses the future. There are many predictions, including things like better recognition of fake news, enhanced image and video search, and dynamic pricing for ads or subscriptions. But no one knows for sure. One convincing statistic that I'll leave you with is that the Associated Press estimates that AI helps to free up about 20% of reporters' times, giving them more time to concentrate on storytelling rather than fact-checking or research. 
this percentage is only going to increase. And I at least choose to be cautiously optimistic that this will enable us to craft higher quality journalism. And very quick before I go, I just want to say, think twice when you're reading the news, because it's good to be aware that you might be reading a story that was generated from a bot or an algorithm. If you're in a position to use AI or machine learning to convey a message, make sure you are asking questions and that you understand where that data is coming from and how it's being prioritized. And finally, watch out for more cool things in this space coming very soon. So yeah, that's it. Um, here's that link of resources. Again, unfortunately, I'm not able to join the live Q&A session, but my DMs on Twitter are open if you want to ask any questions or discuss any of them or share your favorite you know, bots or algorithms with me. I love to hear it. Um, for now, I'll just say thanks for listening. <laughs>